In this video on Origami Basics, I'm going to show you how to fold a square grid accurately. It may come in handy especially for square grid tessellations, but also box pleating models. There will be two parts to this video. First, I'll show how to fold grids that have divisions that are a power of 2. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. These power of 2 divisions are the easiest to fold and the most commonly needed too. In the end, I'll add some notes for other divisions. So let's start folding a square grid that is a power of 2. Now I'm going to use the color side up for the first fold, so that is a valley fold, and that's because for tessellations I think it's a little nicer to have a valley fold showing on the color side because it's less visible than a mountain fold. So that's the first tip. Always do valley folds on the color side or the, the dominant side of the tessellation and then make a strong crease, unfold and rotate and crease the other way around too. Now it's important that you always rotate the paper after each crease, so you wouldn't fold if you want say a 16 uh, grid division, you wouldn't fold 16 on one length and then the sixteenths on the other length. That's because the paper does warp a little when you fold it and you wouldn't get as nice results. For the same reasons actually, if you do need diagonal folds, then add them in the beginning. Now we're going to always reverse the folds. So after we folded it valley fold, we're also going to make a mountain fold seen from the color side. And like that, the crease is a bit stronger and it also has less of a direction. But the first crease you make is always the most important one. Now, I find it quite difficult to see crease lines, especially valley creases. So what I prefer is I actually refold a crease and then I align edge with edge. And I find that's much easier to get nice precision when you do that on one side, and you don't want this, uh, these layers uh, adding up too much, so I'm going to unfold it again, so that we just have two layers, and again fold. And as you can see, I'm again making a valley fold on the color side up. And unfolding, and again rotating to finish the next direction. Now, there's also different ways in which you can get like these nice straight creases. I usually, especially when this gets quite narrow, I usually align on the right and the left and then I pull the paper apart so it's quite straight, go to the middle and then outside. So the, the, the important bit here is that I do pull the paper apart here to then get a nice straight crease. So now you can see there's four divisions on each side. We're just going to reverse it, making the mountain folds too. And in the other direction too. And now we're going to work on eighths. And again, I'm going to fold edge to edge. So I'm making that mountain fold and this one and then aligning the edges. And it's important to align kind of edge to edge of two consecutive creases. So you can see there were no other creases in between here because that gives nicer precision. It's actually the case that like this, any errors you make in the beginning of creasing accurately, they get smaller and smaller, because by always dividing into half, you're also dividing the error into half. So if you made a small error in the beginning, it's going to get smaller and smaller the more divisions you make, and so the grid gets more and more accurate, and, and that's what you really want. And that's also why the power of two divisions are the easiest to get very accurate, because you always can fold in half one of the sections. 
And once we've got that, we're going to go on to the next one. And as you can see, here we've got edge to edge, which we're folding like that. And then the next one. Always folding edge to edge. The last strip is always a raw edge to a folded edge. And all of the others will be folded edge to folded edge. Always first folding a value fold on the color side and then after that reversing all the creases to make them stronger and to make the direction of the creases less strong. So now we're on the reversing step and of course you only need to reverse the new creases so that will always be every second one. Now for tessellations it's nice if you have valley folds throughout on one side but for box pleating models where you also need square grids you may want to have this uh, zigzag pattern and and then for the just for the very last iteration so for example we have eight divisions now if you needed a 16 by 16 grid then now you would make all of the valley folds with the white side up so that every second crease was first creased as a mountain fold on the color side up. Uh, but for tessellations, you get the nicest finish, in my opinion, if you do valley folds throughout. So that's an 8x8 eight eight division grid. And you can continue if you now do these same steps again. You get a 16x16, 32x32, 64x64, and so on. And now, again, because I noted this in the beginning, if you do need to add diagonal creases, the, the main diagonal I'd do in the very beginning as the very first crease. And if you need to do these blintz folds now, it's important that you don't align this point, say, to that crease intersection here. But if you want to do that, you would actually go over to where that crease line hits the raw edge and you start a crease there and same thing on the other side and then you either pull it straight and make a crease or even better you use these intersections right here to ensure that the diagonal crease exactly runs through those intersections because that's the important part of the diagonal folds you add that they always go through exactly these intersections. Now I noted in the beginning that I'd also tell you how to do grids that aren't a power of two. So there's, there's two main methods I usually use. The first is if the, the division is just slightly smaller than a power of two. So for example, if you'd need a 60 by 60 division grid, then what you can do is you can fold a 64 by 64 division grid and then you cut off four columns and four rows and then you have your nice division. So in this case, by cutting off one column and one row, you'd have a seven by seven division grid. Now, the main disadvantage of this is that the paper gets smaller. This is especially the case if you want to fold a grid that has divisions that is significantly smaller than the next power of two. So for example, if you'd have a division of 40 that you want, then you don't really want to fold a 64 division grid because you're cutting off a lot of the paper. In that case, one good method is to kind of look at other divisions. For example, 40 is 8 times 5. So one thing you could do is you first divide the paper into fifths with your favorite method. I've got a video on how to do fifths, but you might also want to measure it out or do some other approximation method. And then each of the fifths you divide with this method into eighths. And, you know, if you need a 38 division grid, you might do a 40 division grid and then just cut off two square columns and two square rows to get that 38 division grid. So, I hope this helped you learn how to fold a square grid accurately. So how about you try folding the 5-4 tessellation by Eric Gierde? 
or the clover folding by Shutsu Fujimoto. And I also have a playlist of instructions for further tessellations, which you may enjoy. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next videos. And finally, do check out my website happyfolding.com for more origami content. I hope to see you around and happy folding!